video covering basic MIDI setups for VSTs. This video is very much aimed at people who are starting right from the beginning who have maybe bought their DAW, bought their drum or instrument VST and now need some guidance as to where to go from there. I've had some requests for this so that's why I'm going to cover it at this sort of level. For those of you who are already really familiar with MIDI and using VSTs you're not going to probably find much of use here but uh, please keep a look out later in the year after I've covered my uh, new guitar videos coming up after this one I will be coming back to do another advanced drum VST mixing techniques video which will uh, cover drum in some even more detail for, for those of you who still want, want some more information on that front. So, once you've got something like Cubase as your DAW, I will be using Cubase as the example here. A lot of the skills are going to be transferable, but you may find that one or two things don't work in quite the same way. So you've got your DAW, you've bought something like a drum VST or an instrument VST. Where do you go from there? Where do you start? And the answer to that is by using MIDI. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface and is designed as a universal language so you can buy any piece of software or any piece of hardware and they will be able to talk to each other using MIDI. So in Cubase, which is very well set up towards dealing with something like MIDI, we're going to first of all create a new track. Um, if you click in a blank area of your track creation area, you can see MIDI track very obviously there create a MIDI track to begin with and this MIDI track is where we can produce MIDI which tells the instrument what to do basically it's, it's going to be that straightforward as an example I've selected an area here bars 1 to 8 if I double click that's now given me a MIDI zone if I double click on that MIDI zone again you'll see it brings up a grid with a keyboard and we can literally draw MIDI lines which will tell the instrument what to play. We're going to come back to that shortly. First of all, what to do with this track. We've created a MIDI track. We need to now tell Cubase to link that to the VST that we want to control. So by touching F11, yeah, it's a shortcut key to bring up your VST instrument panel. I'm going to start with Personal Orchestra. There's a reason I'm going for this one in particular. Personal Orchestra is a multi-instrument VST and uh, that will come in handy very shortly as to uh, demonstrate something. I've now got my MIDI channel, I've got my VST loaded into Cubase. Over on the left here, where you have your track information, you can see we've got all MIDI inputs. This is what you're telling Cubase is controlling the MIDI channel. Now, you don't really need to worry about that unless you're using a keyboard input to rec record or control it manually. That's probably not going to be the case for you. If you were doing that, you would see an option here to use your keyboard that you'd connect previously connected. But what we're looking for is the MIDI output, which at the moment defaults to something you know rubbish that comes with Microsoft. What we're going to choose is that personal orchestra, which I've already loaded. So now I've told Cubase that this MIDI channel is going to control personal orchestra. Just below that you can see two more buttons here. There's this little grid is a shortcut button which will bring your VST back up for you. It's really useful to know that. So I can then load my instruments into these different patches here for this particular one. Why I've used personal orchestra to demonstrate is you can have up to eight instruments and what you may be thinking is when you've got a MIDI channel like this, if we then created a second MIDI track, added that track, created some MIDI, and also set that to a personal orchestra, how does Cubase know which is MIDI channel 1 and which is MIDI channel 2, and what's it going to control within the instrument? The answer to that is in MIDI channels. Over here, next to the shortcut VST button, you see a number 2 by MIDI channel 2 Cubase has automatically set that to channel 2. There are, as you can see, 16 MIDI channels available to you. That is a universal. If we go back to MIDI channel 1, you'll see Cubase had defaulted that to 1, but I could change that to anything I wanted. Over on my VST instrument, as you get this option for multiple instruments, then in patch 1 here, I can change that to maybe number one, change the next one to number two, and so on. I don't need to go any further demonstrating how that would work. And I've now told Cubase and Personal Orchestra which MIDI channel is going to be assigned to which, which MIDI track and also which MIDI instrument. So I could have a cello here and a violin there. 
and each channel will record and control each one independently. So once you've established your connections, the next thing to do is uh, work out how you want to control your VST. Now we look at MIDI channel 1 here again, uh, just quickly over on the left where I mentioned before the inputs and the outputs. Uh, I think I just better mention where I said you could connect a keyboard if you're using a keyboard for example by keeping it on all MIDI inputs what you're telling Cubase is to include the information coming from MIDI track one here as, as the input and also on the output you may notice I've got here MIDI ports one and two for my EMU DSP sound card if you've got MIDI ports on your sound card you can assign the MIDI to run in or out of those as well the advantage of that is if you're using a piece of hardware, for example, if you've got a hardware synthesizer or something you want to control via MIDI and then bring back into Cubase via some audio tracks, you can use Cubase to do that whole thing for you. So that's really useful for that. But this whole tutorial is just going to use VSTs as an example, but hardware would work in the same way as long as you just set your output to go to your MIDI ports instead of to the VST. So if I double click on that MIDI track that we've created as you can see it's pretty obvious down the left hand side with this keyboard that this is this grid is a series of notes and when I push these buttons you can see down here on the mixer uh, where we've got the MIDI channel 1 you can see that it's uh, sending a MIDI signal through so we know that's connected properly and it doesn't take a genius to work out that um, the notes that I've drawn here are going to be played when we play through it. Now this is where something like setting up your tempo track would be important because if we could do that quickly in project you have tempo track option. This then brings up another map of your bars and you can set the tempo to anything you want you can adjust it at any point so once you have set your tempo all of these little markers in time are set to quarter or eighth notes or 32s whatever you are setting it to triplets it would do the whole lot and so you can quantize everything to be exactly in time quantizing means moving things to be in time now um that's a quick thing to uh show in uh, Cubase actually. If I highlight those notes there, if I was to press the Q button you can see it moved them slightly there. That moved them back into whatever I'd set here, this 16th triplet. It moved them to the nearest triplet note that was available and corrected any tiny timing errors that I may have made during my, my writing. One other point, under the MIDI menu if I was using a drum VST, this, this uh, Garretan Orchestra that I'm using is for instruments uh, like cellos and violins, or strings and brasses, and you can see here that I can choose their duration. And here, for example, I could set that, that would play for one, two, three bars, and then it would stop. With drums, you're obviously just making a hitting noise, maybe once, one at a time, and you don't need to set duration, and working with notes can be a bit fiddly. So you can actually change the view. If we go into the MIDI option here and open the drum editor instead, you can see it's actually populated it for me because it's changed the information. Um, if I click on this drumstick here, we can make individual hits. And what that's telling it is just to make a hit just like a stick would hit the drum. And that's a lot simpler and a lot easier to use when it comes to drums. I'm going to bring that back into Key Editor for the moment. You'll see down here is where it's transformed them again. And you wouldn't want to be working with drum hits in this view, just like you wouldn't want to be working with instrument hits in the drum view. So choosing your view is important when you're thinking about what instrument or drum you're going to be working with. So a quick tour of what the key or drum editor uh, involves, what we're seeing on screen here. This will be the same whether it's the drum editor or the key editor. I'm going to stick with key because there's, there's more options with it basically. First of all with your toolbar here you could see I was drawing notes for varying lengths. That's using this pencil option here, pretty obvious. You draw your line whatever duration you want and as I say by hitting the Q key it would quantize it to be exactly in time. You've then got an eraser, got cutting tools and splicing tools, gluing tools, all very normal and they operate in the same way as in any other program you may have used similar types of tools. Another useful thing is this info line button on the top left. 
If I click on a note like this, you'll see it brings up all of the information, the bars where it starts and ends, how long it is, what the pitch is, the velocity. If you double click on a lot of these, you can change them. MIDI works from zero velocity to 127. 127 is the highest velocity that you, you will get. Uh, velocity is basically volume, it's how hard the note's being hit. And there's channel options as well. You could change that if you wanted, but uh, we'll assume everything on here is channel one, but that is useful to, uh, to note. Down the bottom, you can see here, there is a second bar of information. I can expand it to bring it up here. And if I, whatever note I click on, you'll see will highlight in black on here. And this is, some of this information bar but in more detail it's set as you can see here to velocity and that's telling me that it's set to 100 and i can edit that and i can bring these up and down as i wish and this is a really handy you see it's color coded as well the, the quieter it goes the uh, more blue and the, the louder it goes the more red you can use that to set things really quickly and easily and the graphical view and the graphical drawing is really handy for when you want to edit things like that where it comes in really handy as well is where you want to edit something like modulation uh, if we have something like pitch bend for example if i choose that and i use my selection tool i'll click well this, this note is already selected and go back to the pencil i can choose a graph like this this is basically telling it what i want my modulation wheel to behave like and that will pitch bend up and down accordingly and you can go really as extreme as you wanted to that's a very handy feature to know and for changing filter sweeps and things like that it can be really effective and it's great to be able to automate that you can basically any options that are available in your vst will be available here for you so i've got things that are particular like breath will be particular to my wind instruments and stuff so really useful thing to know that moving on to things that are specific to drum maps what i'm going to do quickly is load up now a drum vst i've got superior drummer on this pc so i'm going to create that here close this for a minute you will notice here superior drummer has been created i can for example with midi 2 here now instead of that being set to personal orchestra i can superior drummer now appears and i'm going to set that so that midi track 2 is going to play superior drummer now uh, i have mentioned this in another video i'm going to cover it very quickly now something like superior drummer if we bring this up obviously multiple instruments here under the mixer you could choose where all these microphones go, you can choose to send them all to multi-channel outputs, which sends them to about 16 to 32 different outputs. In Cubase, we've only got the one output set here as default. Very important you know how to change that. If we hit F11, it's called Activate All Outputs, and next to the On and the Standby buttons here is this little box with an arrow. If you click on there, there's an activate all outputs option. Click that and you'll see down the bottom here, they've all been created magically for us. And it's that simple. Any instrument that you get in your VSTs when it's set to multiple outputs, Cubase will talk to it, find out how many outputs it needs and set them all for you. And in Cubase, you can name one, drum one, whatever, you know, you can name these anything you want. So you can really customize them quite nicely. I've set MIDI track two here. I'm going to open that up and that's set to key editor. I'm going to bring that over now to drum editor. And there's a few things I wanted to, to show you quickly. One thing question someone asked me was how to create uh, MIDI quickly. Now, a really useful way of doing that, especially if you've got superior drummer, they come with grooves, what are called MIDI grooves that are already set up for you. I'm going to choose one straight for four for going to just an intro fill there something like this you can literally just drag and drop them in i'm going to get rid of my one for a moment two will do i'll double click on one and you can see here if i change that to drum editor it has auto automatically added them in for me that is as simple as dragging and dropping so if you uh, want to be lazy about it that's the best way of doing it find some rhythm midi that's uh, that comes with the vst if, if it offers that kind of thing you can do dragging and dropping very easily you see that's a really 
quick way of just building up a drum pattern you can then edit it so once i've got my drums up here and i've, I've copied this in if i wanted to add as you see here closed hi-hat i could add add them in as well it would be that straightforward it's not locked at all once you've imported it you can mess around with it as much as you want second thing is though uh bring up i'm going to delete these and bring up my blank one again the important thing i wanted to uh, talk about was drum maps when we've got a drum editor we can see here down the left hand side you've got a bass drum or kick drum uh, snare drum hand clap etc what these are these are assigned to particular notes on the midi keyboard and what cubase has set up you can see down the bottom left here it says map no drum map and below that it says gm default as a as a name and what a gm is uh, it's called general midi again it's a universal and what this universal is is for percussion instruments and the universal is that c1 is a bass drum c sharp one is a side stick so on and so forth for lots of standard instruments that can be pretty good and superior drummer with a basic kit that you get with it will follow this very closely you can edit this here so for example if i wanted my snare next to the kick drum i could click and hold and you can see the green line there drag it up there and if i knew i was never going to use a hand clap i could drag, drag that right down out of the way so that it's not in this group of ones that i want to use for my kick snare combo there further to that you may decide you want to do some more editing of uh, the way that works so in the midi menu we will have something called drum map setup near the bottom here if we go into there click on the gm map that is appearing in our drum, drum map list i may have reprogrammed superior drummer which you'll see i've covered that in another video that c sharp one is a is a second kick drum c1 i don't like the name bass drum there that's that's not very metal i'm going to change that to kick drum but that's going to be a bit my left kick drum and c sharp one would have been my kick drum right for example d1 would be my snare d sharp one i may have changed to a a snare roll or something like that and so on and so forth obviously very easy then to change that you can then functions save that as a particular drum map that we want we're gonna save that on my desktop just as a test map and we're telling it here what we want to use it with down the bottom left superior drummer when it's loaded you'll see it appears here as drum map 2 i'm gonna have to double click on it and rename that myself to test map in the list when we close this window we should find in the key editor there we go test map now appears and you'll see up top here you'll see it's now set to my customization now it's well worth going into your drum vst finding out exactly what notes you want to use and setting up your drum map so that it's customized for you and there you have it that should be all the basics that you need in order to get the most out of your vst instruments as i said at the beginning i will be covering drum vst tricks in a bit more detail later in the year my next video however is going to be covering building a really nice heavy guitar tone which i know is something a lot of people have been asking me for for a while now so that is the one that's coming next so uh, stay tuned for that that should be out in the next few weeks Take it all away.